I'm Mike Bradner, and this is Capital Views, and we have with us Mira Kohler, who is the executive director, president, uh, everything of the Alaska Village Electric Co-op. And Mira, tell us about your operation and what you do and, and why it's so unique. Happy to do that. Uh, so Alaska Village Electric Co-op is a nonprofit electric utility uh, that serves Village Alaska. Uh, we were formed in 1967 uh, and actually were incorporated because the governor at the time, who was Hickel, his first time around, uh, was approached by rural Alaska that was seeking to have electricity. Uh, there was no central station service electricity in any of the villages practically. And so a task force was formed to look into what options might exist and that task force eventually homed in on the cooperative model uh, to do that. So they formed us in 1967 and we got a $5 million loan from what was then the Rural Electrification Administration. And with that, we started to build systems to serve villages. You'd be surprised how far $5 million would go uh, back in those days. So our first three villages uh, were energized in late 68. And um, we started building out in subsequent years and we grew to the point where today we serve 58 communities. Uh, the largest of those is Bethel at 6,300 population. Uh, we're spread out across the state. We are mostly in western Alaska because we serve the Northwest Arctic Borough, eight of those 11 villages. Uh, most of the villages in the Bering Straits area, about a little more than half of the villages in the YK area, uh, several communities around um, mid Yukon, uh, we serve Minto. That's our only system that's actually on the road. Uh, we have uh, three villages in Bristol Bay and are soon going to probably acquire Twin Hills as well because the state is building a line to connect them to Togiak, which is our village. Then we have uh, Old Harbor on Kodiak Island and Yakutat here in southeast Alaska. Now what's unique about your communities, they're standalone systems for the most part. And I always say, well, a kilowatt of electricity in Ohio can probably travel from one corner of the state to the other. It uh, can travel from one from the east coast of, of America to the west coast of America very easily. Uh, we have no grid in rural Alaska. We have a very nominal grid in urban Alaska, but let's just talk about uh, rural Alaska. One of our missions in the last uh, several years has been to try and connect villages because when you do so, you can combine their loads and create economies of scale. So uh, we have built tie lines to connect about seven villages to other villages. And when we do that, we're able to actually put in renewables as well. So the first major connection that we made was mm, 2006 when we built uh, a line to connect to Nunuk, uh, to Tuxuk Bay, and then also Nightmute to Tuxuk Bay and we put three wind turbines in Tuxuk Bay and we were able to shut down the power plants in the other two communities and just put standby generators at both locations. And so uh, we were able to essentially produce about 25% of our power from wind for all three of those communities. And, and one of the things that was interesting when that happened is that the two communities that were connected to, to Tuxuk Bay immediately noticed how quiet it was in their communities because you didn't have the constant rumble, sound of rumble, the diesel rumble, power rumble plant. The I've been there. Exactly, yeah. exactly. So, so it is a good thing uh, because you do, as I say, you combine the loads and you open up uh, area for wind if you're going to do wind development. So we now have wind turbines in um, 14 communities and we serve a total of 20. Uh, communities with wind. Um, it's still a very modest part of our portfolio. Almost 95% of our power is still provided by diesel, but unfortunately that is our reality. You, you know, you, you want reliable power in the, in the villages just as much as you do in, rural, in ur urban Alaska, and diesel is one of the few technologies that's available that can now, do that. Now you are also dependent on the PCE endowment that somewhat subsidizes uh, the system, but on the other hand, like in Anchorage, we're actually a utility and we have vast areas that probably don't pay for themselves under utility concept. So, right. um, you know, PCE is in a way of, 
PCE has been the reason why we continue to survive. I can tell you that um, AVEC was on the verge of bankruptcy many times because we could not raise rates to the level that was necessary to pay for operations because people don't have the cash income and they couldn't afford to pay the costs of actually operating their own utility. Um, so when PCE came into being in 1984 and established a long-term partial solution, it made it affordable for residents and very importantly for the local municipalities to be able to pay their electric bills. Uh, what is little known is that what we call community facilities. So that, for example, is the local water treatment plant, that's the city hall, that's the boys and girls club, that's the street lights, uh, essential services that deliver quality of life in the villages. They receive PCE on all of their kilowatt hours that they use. And so their electric bills are reduced by, I would say, at least 50% and up to 75% with PCE. So. It was always a struggle year after year uh, in the legislature fighting for PCE money uh, in order to keep their subsidy up. Uh, there were 15 years, 15 consecutive years, where we received only partial funding. And so the PCE would be reduced to 60, 65, 70 percent off what it should be under full funding. Uh, and then finally, we were successful in establishing an endowment. And that was only because the four dam pool communities wanted to own their assets that had been built with state largesse. And so they sold those uh, facilities back to the communities for 20 cents on the dollar. And the proceeds were dedicated to as a first deposit in the PCE endowment fund. Mira, we are out of time already. What? And yes, and uh, it's, I've it's barely wonderful gotten started. to talk to you. <laughs> and, uh, the, uh, it's, you run an amazing program, and it's obviously very essential. And it thank is. you for being with us. Uh, it was a pleasure. We've been talking to Mira Colt, uh, Coley of uh, Alaska Village Lake Co-op. I'm Mike Radner, and this is Community View.